Welcome to the Huberman Lab Podcast, where we discuss science and science-based tools for everyday life. My name is Andrew Huberman. I'm a professor of neurobiology and ophthalmology at Stanford School of Medicine. And today we're discussing my daily routine. A colleague of mine out of Stanford, Dr. Sachin Panda, excuse me, Dr. Chinese Panda, published a beautiful study, the sexiest study I've ever seen Oi. on the importance of... You're not the real Andrew Huberman. I just spilled boiling hot mate all over my thighs. This is absolutely penetrating the epidermis of my skin and causing second degree burns. Excuse me, third degree burns. The pain is almost unbearable. I think this might be death by mate. Oh, oh, I see the light. I'm moving towards the light. I'm getting that light in my body. This is what dying feels like. Although if you are dying, please do not look directly at the light. Just move towards the light or else you can damage your eyes. Can I run the intro now? Yeah. Thanks. Ah! also want to close your eyes. So who is Andrew Huberman? Well, he's single-handedly changed the lives of millions of people through his science-based tools to live healthier and better lives. Now, I've personally been a fan of Andrew over the years, and I think he's probably the best thing to have into social media. Now, there isn't a whole lot of information out there, so I've pieced together little dribs and drabs from articles and online interviews and podcasts that I could find. So without further ado, this is a day in the life of Dr. Andrew Huberman. So first things first, we are getting up and we're getting light in our bodies. So this is something me and Joel have actually tried to do for a while. Handy because it is bright where we live. If you live in some parts of the world where it's like dark until like 12 p.m., good luck standing in front of a ring light for ages. But technically the premise of this, if you don't know, is that a big boost of cortisol is essential in the morning and you're timing that through light. So this is like literally overcast as shit. Meaning we're gonna need about 20 minutes of exposure to light. In, if it's really sunny, apparently 10 minutes does a job or even less. Uh, but usually I just read by window or go for a walk. So today I'm gonna go for a walk because I need 20 minutes of this. When I say light, you say body. Height, little body. Currently looking after Amanda's dog. This strut on the gun. It's Mowgli, M-O-W-G-L-I. For the aficionados out there, his name is Mowgli. <laughs> There's a seal in there. He's loving it. So this is Operation Save Mowgli, he got so tired. Maybe half a K to go. Oh, leave no man behind. So usually human does cold exposure, presumably cold showers, but I thought, look, I'm not gonna bitch it. I have an ice bath here, but the, the reason why we do ice baths is what Huberman highlighted is that the increase in your baseline dopamine, just the regular level of dopamine, it goes up like, I think it's twofold, uh, which is, it's insane. So you notice that because you come out of an ice bath and you're like smiling. I mean, it's probably because you're just fucking happy to be out of it. Hey Siri, set a timer for three minutes. Oh, fuck me. Ah, ah. One thing I heard human say as well was that um, he does this in like stages of walls, like one wall being you really want to get out. I think he breaks through three or five. I don't know, I can't remember. Either way, he smashes walls. <laughs> Shit, is that Wim? Can you guys see Wim Hof? I think he's, he's been staying over like recently. What do you mean? I am in. I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> Wim Hof, Wim Hof would dive in here, head first. <laughs> I get out of the water and my, my cock is swelling. The aficionados out there, it's a big cock. <laughs> so finally, the caffeine. Now, Huberman actually delays his caffeine by 90 minutes. Something I really, really struggle with. So. The reason being is, simply put, that uh, sleep pressure, adenosine, of like the, what you gather during the day that makes you get sleepy at night, that builds up. Caffeine uh, pretty much blocks that, so you don't feel the sleepiness. And then if you don't clear all that adenosine out by the morning, and you just have your caffeine and just bl block it again, it can then hit you with an afternoon crash, supposedly. So, I didn't feel the need to ever try this because I never really get afternoon crashes and I usually have caffeine like immediately upon waking, I just have pride. So I never usually get that, but still, if you do, it's worth knowing, if you do get those like afternoon crashes, 
just try clearing out the adenosine by giving it like 90 minutes, 60 to 90 minutes upon waking before you actually rip into any caffeine. So there is that. Now, usually yerba mate or coffee is human's choice of caffeine. Yerba mate tea, let's have a look at that. Ugh. That's the tea. What sort of tea is that? Yerba mate. Looks like mold. It is. Oh, you can't eat that shit. Can't you scrape it off? Don't, I'm joking, there's no way I'm eating that. Oh. I'm gonna bend the whole thing. Oh god. Can we check this whole container out? Yeah, that fuck is moldy, so zero chance I'm dying for this video. <laughs> We're just going with plain coffee. Yerba mate, if you don't know what that is. It is a tea that has caffeine in it as well. A bit higher in the caffeine content. I bought it like six months ago, or a bit over, when I heard Huben talk about it, I got his brand, I can't remember what it was, I put it here. Um, and I got it when I was in a dieting phase because Yerba Mate is actually a GLP-1 agonist. This sounds super nerdy, I like to say it. Uh, Glucagon-like peptide one agonist, which means it induces or enhances that little hormone, which uh, promotes satiety. So I took that because I'm like, well, it was great, I'll just have the tea in the morning. That can, in a dieting phase, it can help suppress the appetite as well as being like warm to sip on that suppresses it for me as well and a bit of caffeine so I thought great and I would just have that while I'm working so that's what we're doing now 90 minute bout of work number one let's do it oh no because the reason why we're working now too another little human hack is that your peak optimal work should be around two to four hours after waking now we're going to commence our first 90 minute bout of work Okay, so look at this for meal one. Grass-fed T-bone steak, some veggies, a little bit of rice. Because Huberman, old mate Huberman has uh, grass-fed beef, veggies, some fruits maybe, and then if he's trained with weights, he'll have some starches, rice, potatoes, those kind of things. Or if he doesn't, he'll just go low carb, but we did train with weights, of course, I had to. Uh, so we're gonna have some starches. And to go along with this, we've got our greens. I have just EHP Labs greens here, Oxy greens. And to be fair, they actually taste ridiculous. Like, they taste really nice. It's really sweet. Oh, and if you want some, the code's right there. Zach10. A little cheeky discount. That's actually really refreshing. If there's one thing EHP have nailed, it's quality of ingredients and flavor. I've actually been to where they produce this stuff, and the quality control is actually awesome. Very impressive. Pineapple. I'll tell you what the best thing about eating a T-bone is, and it's not the, it's not the taste or the nutrients, because, I mean, they're good too, but the best thing about it is when you're at the end and you're left with the bone, you can use that bone to stab uh, another prisoner in the neck. Learned that from Law Abiding Citizen. Great movie, not a documentary, not based on true events, but good movie. If you haven't seen it, watch it. But in that, Gerard Butler does that. And um, I can't not think about it every time I have a T-bone. It's just, it's ingrained in my head. Steak down at Del Frisco's with all the trimmings. Okay, I'm gonna finish the rest of this, save some space in my memory card, and I'll see you guys at the NSDR protocol. So he's actually coined this term NSDR, which is non-sleep deep rest. So I think he uses it in a couple of different ways. Well, firstly, what is it? Non-sleep deep rest. Anything that induces a certain brain waves, like of like relaxation and like kind of deep sleep kind of thing without being asleep. So usually it's some kind of like meditative practice, breathing, yoga nidra, that's what that's what it usually is. And he's actually recorded one. So we're gonna use his uh, Yoga Nidra recording on here, which I'll leave in the, in the description, you guys can find that. Uh, I used it yesterday, pretty good, I'm gonna try it again. Uh, but basically, he will do this in the morning if he feels like he hasn't had a good sleep, I believe, if he hasn't been well rested, or in the afternoons. Now, I personally use this uh, in the afternoons, but I usually do uh, meditation. I use um, Sam Harris's app, Waking Up, I've done that for a long time, that's really good. Any kind of meditation like that, 10 minutes, for me, it helps me kind of reset, feel a little bit better, and then it helps me actually get into my next bit of work in the afternoon because otherwise like it's a bit of a slump. So I understand for most people, like nine to five job, it might be difficult to just go, hang on a sec, hold that thought, I'm just gonna go meditate. 
okay, where are we up to? Like, you can't really do that. Uh, but for me, because I work <laughs> my own hours like from home, I can do a meditation at 3 p.m. and it's all good. So we're doing Hubman's NSDR protocol. Let's get into it. So if you're not already seated or lying down. <laughs> Sounds like Hubman's in bed with me. <laughs> this is just, this video took a turn. If I do this, it'll, and I just pretend like Hubman's sitting right next to me. Like if I want to go to bed with Andrew, I'll just do this. No, mate. Please do so now. Can you tell me to do this, Andrew? You also want to close your eyes. Okay. So if your eyes aren't already closed, please close them now. I like when he's demanding. Throughout this protocol, you'll want to breathe normally, unless instructed or otherwise. <laughs> tell you what, I just feel chilled now. Like, chilled. A bit of a mental reset, that's what I find with it. Um, but supposedly, it's supposed to help sleep by like helping you to kind of turn off your thoughts. By I'm guessing by practicing it for a while because you're kind of getting into that state quite a bit. But for me, I just love that short-term benefit of just like, ah, I feel just relaxed. It feels good now. And plus, it felt like I had a little intimate moment with Andrew. Like it felt like he was next to me. Some of you might like that. Um, I did, but it was also a bit troubling. Anyway, <laughs> another bout of work, I reckon. Yeah, let's get another bout of work in. Okay, so dinner, evenings, we don't know what he eats for dinner, okay? But we do know that it's relatively low protein, lower in protein and higher in carbs. This is to maximize the serotonin and tryptophan, which is just that kind of relaxing feel good, usually boosted from a bit of a carb intake. And actually turkey is supposed to boost the tryptophan, but you might need to have a lot of it, but otherwise, I don't know. So I had my dinner, which was just adjust the proportions, a little bit more soba noodles there, a little bit less tuna, it's kind of nice tuna and soba. That was it. Now, I'm in luck because before bed supplements, evening supplements, I'm quite good with. We have a few of them. His favorite concoction, from what I've heard a lot of the time, has been L-theanine, kind of a nice relaxant there, magnesium threonate, or biglycinate. I have both. Biglycinate, I feel, is more towards the body. Threonate, more for the brain, I think. Um, but we're gonna have threonate. And then we're gonna also have, we don't have apigenin. Used to have apigenin, I tried it. I couldn't really notice too much but I don't know, it could have just been one of those things. And then ashwagandha. He does have ashwagandha every now and then to kind of minimize the cortisol at night because it does work. That's why he usually has like a period of two weeks on, two weeks off or something like that. But I'm kind of guilty. If I'm going through a stressful time, I just keep it in there and I really enjoy that. So I usually take two of those a day anyway. So supplements. So I just loaded up on uh, oxy sleep because it's ashwagandha and theanine again. So checks out. According to the articles, get some daily reading in at night. So here's here's the confliction here. Humans vary against light in the evenings, right? You don't want to you don't want to get light in your body. No light at night. I'm gonna turn this bad boy. Pretend like that's not on. But for those giving me shit for reading at night in terms of like the lights, I have this on my books on iPad. I have this on full black screen. So all, you can't even see that, see? All that's illuminated is, is the white text, and that, like, I'm, there's barely blue light coming off that. It's like black, main thing's black. So that's my level of blue light exposure, which I'm telling you is like minimal. So I've been doing this for three years, before bed reading, black screen, and I get so tired, I'm telling you, like my eyes just get like super tired. So for me, that's normal. Uh, I did find supposedly Andrew Huberman's reading list, which is very interesting. Um, I've read a couple of books in there, like uh, Circadian Code by Dr. Chinese Panda. That's really good. So I'll actually link that in the description. A few things to link in here. So I'm gonna turn this off, have a read, and uh, see you guys in the morning. Curious to see how I'm gonna feel. Good night. Welcome to the Huberman Lab Podcast, where we discuss science and science-based tools for everyday life. Your DMs in the PM and the AM, then I slide into your feelings when you see just what I'm saying.